Hi, I'm Paul from Test Data Services, and today I'm going to show you how to do load testing to validate and verify the operation of auto scaling. I'm going to show how we can use a workload profile like this and turn it into actual workload with a pattern like this so that we can actually see how well auto scaling is working in a given platform or a given stack. Uh, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to start a test so that we can actually have some results to look at shortly while I explain the process. Um, and when I'm starting this test, I'm going to just click on this button here to start. And I'm going to explain all this in a minute. Uh, let's just have a check and see it's running. Yes, it's running. All right. So now, if I go back to my PowerPoint, so what is auto scaling? Auto scaling is the method to automatically adjust the computational resources of a system based on the workload that the work that the system is processing. Uh, basically, servers cost money, whether they are in a data center or even on the cloud. Every minute that you're running them costs money, but also just having them costs money. But in the cloud, obviously, if you normally need, say, 16 web servers for a fairly large website, uh, well, at night time or at quiet periods, you might only need two or four. So instead of running them for that whole time or paying for them for that whole time, you ramp down or you scale in uh, your workload. And then if you have an exceptional period of high workload, you'd want to ramp up or scale out or scale up uh, your uh, your resources. Maybe you go to from 16 to you know um, you know 20 or 30 or whatever um, the the number is. There'll, there'll be an upper limit most likely. But the process of doing that scaling involves triggers. So one of the things we want to do in load testing is we want to establish if the triggers that have been configured work and do the appropriate auto scaling, we want to check that when we're scaling, uh, when we're increasing computational capacity, how long does it take from when the trigger happens to when we actually see the uh, the increased resource? And when we're scaling in or scaling down, we want to make sure that we don't have any transaction errors. We want to make sure that everything is quiesced properly on the server before it goes out of action. So. Uh, to be able to do that, what we really need to do is we need to have a, a load test that has a dynamic workload profile. We need to be able to ramp up and down the workload uh, in in a, a a very realistic way. Now, the test I'm going to show you today is using two sine waves in a composite form. That's not a realistic test, but what it shows is it shows that we can do any workload profile we like. When it comes to testing the auto scaling function, you don't want to do a ramp and hold traditional style test. You want to go up and down. You want to make sure that your ramp ups are dynamic, that they're not static. You're not, not increasing by you know 20 requests per second um, over a period of time. You want to have it so it's changing. Now a sine wave is pretty good at that. They have a pretty steep period in a sine, uh, you know, pretty steep elevation or sorry gradient in a sine wave. But uh, we also need to make sure that we stay for extended periods of time within certain triggers, uh, trigger areas. We want to see if we stay in a certain region for too long, do we go up or do we go down as we would expect to? And we need to make sure that whatever test we run, it's repeatable. So. I've got um, a, a series of calls in test data services that are available where you can plot in every single second um, the actual workload that you want in terms of a percentage from 0% to 100%. And all I did was I make, made the calls that populate the profile uh, using some simple math and two sine waves. So you can see we've got one sine wave here that goes up and down and we have another sine wave that goes up and down uh, three times as often. And so when we add them together, we have this dominant uh, sine wave shape and then this sort of minor sine wave shape. Now, if we run this at uh, 100 transactions per second, we'll end up with something like this. Now, this light green is the number of transactions per second that we actually processed in a real test um, according to that profile. Uh, and this dark green up the top here is the request to find out 
uh, from the test data service API endpoint, should we do work or not? So that's the quick summary of why we want to be doing auto scaling testing using uh, a dynamic workload profile. Now, I mentioned sine waves before. If you notice, the increase in load, say here, is much less than the increase of load just here. This is very steep. If we go back to this graph, we can see that it, the the gradient is increasing gradually and it's maxed out about here somewhere. So you can do some pretty clever things. You can have step functions and everything if you really want. But uh, in real life, you don't normally have step functions. So you're probably better to have uh, something. For some clients, I've actually asked them to hand draw a workload profile for each business process. So you might have three key business processes. You can use this approach in aggregate. You can actually have three different workload profiles, one for each of three scripts, and they can all run concurrently, which means you get a dynamic workload mix that is able to be um, repeatable, which I think is fantastic. So let's have a look and see how we're going with this test. So we can see that we've got uh, this gradual ramp um, up and now we're going down for that first bump. Uh, so that's a good start, right? Our transaction response times are nice and, and quick. Let's have a look at the script and show you what the script does. Now this is using a Gatling script. Um, if I just go in, if I click on uh, view script in Load Runner, because I'm running this in Load Runner, um, it just opens up a text file. It doesn't open up a nice editor. But it, that doesn't really matter because it's a very simple script. The script is doing two things. It's making this call here to get workload and it's passing in a subscription key. And then um, it's expecting a response back from that to, s to tell it should it run the workload or not. And it saves that value uh, in a variable called run workload. And then I do a do if equals run workloads one. And if it is, I run the key business process I care about. In this case, it's um, an Open ID Connect authorized call, which I'm about to show you in a bit more detail. So that is what the script is doing. Pretty simple, right? Now, the, to make it so it works with this cyclic process, what we need to do is we need to say how many users we're ramping up and what the ramp up period is. And in this case, we're ramping up uh, 360,000 users over 3,600 seconds, so over one hour. Now that's 100 users a second, but each of these users when they ramp up only runs one iteration. So what that means is we're doing 100 new iterations per second for the entire test, and we have no concern of how long it takes to run an iteration. So if, instead of running a single request business process, we had 20, business, uh, 20 uh, steps, that would be fine. We'd still be doing the appropriate workload from a business process perspective, which is important. Now, to show you what's going on in here and how to control the test, I'm going to drag across a Postman window. So I have this collection in Postman, and the collection is able to, if I hit send, uh, show me what the workload profile looks like by me clicking on this Visualize button, and we can see uh, let's just change the screen here a bit. We can see this is that workload profile. Now let's just go back and have a look. We can see it goes up and then starting to go down and at 400 seconds, or maybe 300, 380 something seconds, so about six, just over six minutes, it starts to go up again. Yeah, let's have a look and see what we're up to. Exit that, go back to run, and we can see that we're already eight minutes in and we're already going up. So you can see this is following really nicely, that, that pattern, which is great. So go back to Postman here. Now, the calls to start a test after we've populated it, which I haven't shown you, um, this is the call I ran right at the beginning uh, of this um, video. Um, it uh, basically just says start workload. There's another one to stop the workload. There's one to pause workload. If I push this one now, hit send, then what it's going to do is it's going to pause the workload where it currently is. 
it makes it not very repeatable. I wouldn't recommend you do this, but in a real test, but there are times when you're doing like exploratory load testing where you might want to do this. You might be down at one of those troughs and you might want to keep it at that trough for a while before rising back up again. Um, then we've got this resume test, which I, I won't click yet. And we've got get current workload. Now, if I click this one, it's saying that our workload percentage is currently 87.7%. And each time I hit this send button, I'm going to get a, a response back of a zero or one in run workload. Now, if I do this eight times, one of them is probably going to be a zero. There's a zero. You can see that works pretty good. And then uh, what the test is actually doing, the business process is doing, is one of these, which is doing an open ID connect call to give me a, um, an ID token back. And that ID token has a whole lot of things in it, which I might use in some downstream system. Uh, for fun, I'll just show you because it's pretty cool. If I go in and copy that ID token, and I go across to uh, to JWT.io, JWT paste it in. I can see I've got a valid signature here, and I can see that oh, there it says valid signature and i can see the information i've got like that's kim caffrey the email address is verified and i've got some data there and you can see that the um that the token is going to last for a certain amount of time and so on it was created at a certain time going to last a certain time so you can do this as often as you like um, and in fact the test is doing that at the moment about 90 times per second or in fact 87 times per second right so if i just uh, watch this we will have been steady here at approximately what was it 87 percent let's have another look get current workload yep 87 percent still 87 percent now if i resume the test it will now continue on its merry way of undulating with up and down workload now if it get it's going to be increasing toward 100%, right? And it's telling us we're 540 seconds into the actual schedule. It's not how long it's been running for. That's into that, that workload definition uh, itself. 93, 94. Now, as we're getting close to 100%, it'll slow down. It won't be quite as quick, but we will get to 100%. So that is how to build a test that is able to um, validate the way that auto scaling has been configured uh, to test the triggers uh, and to test um, the the way how long it takes for instances to come online or resources to come online and more importantly because I see most failures not in scaling up or scaling out I see them when you're actually uh, reducing in size if um, maybe a server is terminated while there's still workload on it uh, so I hope you find find this useful. Let's just before I exit, let's just have one last look at this graph. There we go, 100%. Pretty nice, hey? And you can see that was that pause uh, there. So we were going to go up, and this bit here in the graph is where we asked it to pause. So I think that's pretty cool. Hope you enjoy um, doing your testing, and um, hope you get into doing some auto scale validation and verification in your project, and maybe you choose to use uh, these calls to help you. Have a great day.